10. Cartoon-Faced Horse We all love cute animals with enormous eyes, and who doesn't want to ride a horse straight out of a Disney movie? Cartoon-Faced Horses are deliberately bred to have concave nasal bridges, and this practice has surprisingly become increasingly popular in recent years. This is much to the horror of experts, who claim the creature's misshapen snouts can cause serious breathing problems. Like pugs! Those poor dogs can barely breathe, but we still breed them because they're cute. The trend made international headlines in 2017 when an Arabian show horse named El Rey Magnum's value was estimated at millions of dollars. Born to parents with similarly caved-in faces, El Rey Magnum's pricey pedigree has been described by experts as a horrific example of extreme breeding. But there is a huge increase in demand for horses like this. People want them. What do you think of this horse? Let me know in the comments below. The peculiar trait is especially dangerous because, unlike humans and dogs, horses cannot breathe through their mouths, according to equine expert Tim Greet, who spoke with the Daily Mail. He says that exercise would probably be very limited for this horse. It might have an asthma attack. Dating back 3,000 years, Arabian horse pedigree standards dictate having a concave face and El Rey Magnum's owners defended their decision to deliberately mate his parents who display this trait. In a written criticism condemning the practice, horse reproduction expert Jonathan Pycock stated that the problem comes when you breed for particular looks and when those looks are detrimental to the horse's health. In my book, that is fundamentally wrong. But is it really that bad? Some experts disagree, including Colorado State University's Musculoskeletal Research Program Director, Wayne McElwraith, who claimed that there's no evidence indicating that horses with concave faces are at higher risk of breathing problems. But the cartoon-faced characteristic is controversial, to say the very least. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Number 9. Silk Spinning Goats The future is here, people! Goats are now spinning spider webs. What? In 2010, researchers from the University of Wyoming announced that they had successfully implemented spiders' silk spinning genes into goat DNA. Out of a litter of seven goat kids, three were born with this man-made genetic trait, which caused them to produce milk infused with silk protein. The experiment was carried out in an attempt to figure out how to produce enough spider silk fiber for use in things like artificial ligaments and tendons, jaw repair, eye sutures, and other medical supplies, as well as car airbags and bulletproof vests. Spider silk is highly valued for its strength and elasticity, but scientists found that it was virtually impossible to harvest great quantities of the material. They had tried spider farms, which failed because spiders are highly territorial and tend to kill each other when confined to a shared space. Then, the idea of transgenic goats came along and was an apparent success, as the three kids who tested positive for the silk protein gene did not appear to have any health, behavioural or appearance differences compared to goats without the gene. Three years later, two of the goats born with the trait, sugar and spice, were removed from display at the Canada Agriculture Museum in Ottawa due to public pressure over the ethical implications of creating genetically modified animals. Do you think it's wrong or is it okay? Research into the usefulness of the animals continued and as recently as 2019, a team led by one of the initial researchers at Utah State University oversaw around 20 goats capable of producing silk-infused milk. Would you wear a jacket made from spider goat silk? Let me know in the comments below. Number 8. Dong Tao Chicken Originating from the Vietnamese village of Dong Tao in the Khoai Chau district near Hanoi, the Dong Tao chicken, also called dragon chicken, was once bred exclusively for royalty and bureaucrats. Historically speaking, this prized rare breed is an integral part of many Vietnamese festivals, including the Tet Lunar New Year. Dong Tao chickens often grow wider than a human, they also have freakishly massive, scaly, dragon-like legs that are considered a delicacy and are served in expensive restaurants that cater to the wealthy. They don't call it dragon chicken for nothing. 
Their meat is said to sell for as much as 350,000 to 400,000 Vietnamese dong, 15 to 17 dollars USD per kilogram, and the birds themselves cost around 2,500 USD per pair. Having such disproportionately overgrown legs makes breeding quite difficult, as the weight of the mother's legs can break her eggs when she sits on them. For this reason, eggs are often kept in an incubator. Hatching is challenging as well because these birds tend to lay less eggs than other chickens and are very sensitive to temperature changes. Male Dongtao chickens, whose legs can grow as thick as a human wrist, reach up to 13 pounds or 6 kilos by adulthood. It takes anywhere from 18 months to 5 years for chickens to reach 11 to 13 pounds or 5 to 6 kilos, which is considered an appropriate weight for slaughter. The largest pair of Dongtao chicken legs on record weigh 2.2 pounds or 1 kilo each. What do you think of these chickens that look like they never skip leg day? Let me know in the comments below and if you're liking the video, hit that thumbs up and be sure to subscribe for more animal videos. Number 7. Glow-in-the-dark animals Remember when glowfish was super popular? They are still around today, you might even have some in your aquarium. Well, since then, scientists have been busy making all kinds of glow-in-the-dark creatures. Scientists in Taiwan created the first glow-in-the-dark animals in 2008 when they bred three pigs with glowing skin, eyes, teeth and organs. To achieve these results, the team inserted fluorescent jellyfish DNA into over 260 pig embryos and implanted the embryos into eight sows, four of which became pregnant. Three male piglets were born with the luminescent trait. By day, their snouts had a greenish tint. After being introduced to a blue light, they glowed green in the dark. In 2009, Japanese scientists successfully passed the same jellyfish DNA-infused trait onto second-generation marmosets. The same year, red fluorescent genes from sea anemones caused five dogs to glow reddish-orange under an ultraviolet light, and they even gave birth to fluorescent puppies. Researchers have also created fluorescent cats, fish, mice, and more. Although genetically modifying animals to glow in the dark sounds cool, Doing so might sound pointless too, but it's not. In fact, this has been done for multiple reasons. In one 2011 study, scientists inserted a feline immunodeficiency virus, FIV, resistant gene into cats and tracked its development by inserting a fluorescent green protein into the genes. By studying glowing dogs and monkeys, researchers hope to better understand how debilitating hereditary conditions in humans like Parkinson's and motor neuron disease are passed on. And fluorescent fish helped one team track harmful chemicals from industrial pollution and learn about how they move throughout the body and impact health. Number 6. The Budapest Pigeon The Budapest Pigeon was developed in Hungary in the early 20th century with selective breeding by a pair known as the Poltel brothers, who deliberately mated the birds to exaggerate certain features resulting in a creature with massive, protruding eyes that give it a somewhat alien-like appearance. The Poltel brothers' aim was not necessarily for the Budapest pigeon to acquire its trademark bug-eyed look, but to improve the bird's efficiency in high-endurance flying races. To achieve the desired result, they crossbred numerous types of pigeons, including Vienna MF tumblers, Sieged in tumblers, and the Danzig High Flyer. Their plan worked, and they created a new breed that can stay aloft for up to five hours at a time and which has the conspicuous bulged eyes it's known for today. Besides having a face that takes some getting used to, to put it politely, Budapest pigeons tend to be erratic and restless and they are known to occasionally disappear on their owners. Because the breed is not designed to survive in the wild, a flyaway Budapest pigeon can put themselves in real danger. On the upside, at least the missing bird would be easy to recognize. Number 5. Damascus Goat In recent years, shocking footage and images of a deformed-looking monstrosity known as the Damascus Goat have circulated online, causing many to wonder if such an animal really exists. Well, it does, and the pictures and video making the rounds on social media 
shows an example of the occasional disturbing consequences of extreme breeding. Also called the Aleppo, Halep, Baladi, Damascene, Shami or Shami, these taller than usual goats are characterized by their uncharacteristically blunt snout and raised nasal bridge. They are prized for their milk, meat, hides and their bizarre appearance. Damascus goats are pretty normal looking, perhaps even cute when they're young. But as they grow up, their faces begin to look like they ran into a door, as Newsweek put it. When the Damascus goat gained popularity as an exotic pet, breeders deliberately mated them to exaggerate their unique features, which are more subtle among traditional livestock populations, according to IFL Science. Consequently, the animals became even stranger looking, and these arguably disturbing changes redefine beauty standards in a way that can be summed up as the weirder, the better. A so-called ideal Damascus goat snout is shortened to the point where their face is nearly square, and the creature that went viral is probably the product of generations of specimens with markedly dramatic features, Newsweek reported. They are prized among their region's culture, with the so-called finest goats selling for as much as $67,000 each. Number 4. Scaleless Snakes First discovered in 1942, snakes with this unique genetic mutation tend to have smooth skin and brighter colours, making these unique reptiles a sought-after pet. Scalelessness is a recessive trait passed down through many snake species. The trait reduces the amount of keratin that creates scales, resulting in a specimen missing anywhere from a few to nearly all their scales. Although most snakes who retain this trait have their ventral scales, which line the belly, they still shed, just like normal snakes. And even though scales retain moisture, scaleless snakes do not suffer from dehydration. One possible disadvantage they may have is vulnerability to enemies from a lack of body armor, which is why captive breeders advise against feeding live prey to a scaleless snake. But expert examination of wild-caught specimens yielded no evidence of more scarring than scaled snakes. Number 3. Bubble-Eyed Goldfish Found only in captivity, the bubble-eyed goldfish is an ornamental species that researchers believe was first developed in China through the crossbreeding of other species, including the celestial eye goldfish. Its most obvious feature is a pair of delicate, fluid-filled sacs protruding from beneath the eyes, the bubble-eyed goldfish also has no dorsal fin. While these features make the fish desirable to aquarium enthusiasts, the sought-after species' unique look comes with numerous disadvantages. For one, the sacs bob around, making the bubble-eyed goldfish a weaker swimmer than other varieties. The bubbles are also delicate, limiting the selection of other fish that the bubble-eye can safely share an aquarium with. Although the sacs regrow if punctured, Injuries can be very painful and put the fish at a heightened risk of infection and damage to the eye tissues. The UK-based Universities Federation for Animal Welfare argues that the bubble eye fish face severe lifelong vision and behavioural consequences from their deformity and that the best solution is to combat the perpetuation of these problems by not breeding or buying specimens who display the trait. Number 2. Dwarf Horses Dwarf horses result from breeders deliberately passing on the equine dwarfism gene, which, on its surface, simply sounds like a condition that makes the animal uncharacteristically small. But there are two different types of this condition, proportional dwarfism, which creates genuinely healthy, miniature animals through selective breeding, including horses. Then there's disproportional dwarfism, which is what it sounds like and can cause severe health issues. Horses with disproportional dwarfism have short, stocky skeletons due to genetic mutations, but their organs develop normally inside of a body that is too small and require the same amount of nutrition as a normal-sized horse. Owners often misunderstand a dwarf horse's nutritional needs and underfeed them, or the animal's organs outgrow its frame. This is painful and it worsens as the affected horse ages. Crystal Les de la Serre explained in an article for The Horse, adding that the condition also disrupts proper organ function. 
Disproportional dwarfism also causes a horse's skeletal system to become deformed and twisted, especially in the jaw, which often becomes misaligned from growing abnormally and tends to lock, requiring extensive dental care. They often get an underbite and the front teeth don't wear anymore and just keep growing. Then the molars get out of alignment and they develop hooks. They literally can't grind or chew. Horse expert John Eberth explained in an interview with Les de la Serre. Dwarf horses face a host of other issues, including misshapen vertebra that form a humped back and a higher likelihood of suffering from respiratory diseases and cardiac problems. A disproportionate dwarf gene could potentially create an entire herd of affected horses. According to Eberth, who said that when it comes to this breeding nightmare, the goal is to remove the mutated gene from the program entirely. Number 1. Aqua Advantage Salmon In 1989, Aqua Bounty Technologies developed the Aqua Advantage Salmon. It is a genetically modified Atlantic salmon that was developed by replacing the species' growth hormone regulating gene with that of the Pacific Chinook Salmon along with a promoter sequence of DNA from the ocean pout eel. As a result of this biological meddling, AccuAdvantage salmon grow year-round rather than only in the spring and summer, cutting the time it takes them to reach market size down from three years to just 16 to 18 months. They were the first genetically engineered animals that were approved for human consumption in Canada and the US, a decision that proved highly controversial based on the suspicion that there could be unintended hazards or consequences associated with the genetic altering of the fish, or that the practice makes the fish unnatural. The Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, contends that eating AccuAdvantage salmon is perfectly safe for anyone who is not allergic to regular salmon, and that numerous assessments have determined that the modification process does not affect the fish's DNA in any off-target ways. People also worried that non-sterile AccuAdvantage salmon might escape into the wild and interbreed with the wild population. Authorities and producers responded to this concern by implementing preventative measures to stop this from happening. To counter ethics-based arguments against AccuAdvantage salmon, proponents of the genetically modified fish claimed that developing a faster-growing version of the fish helped to ensure an adequate food supply as the growing human population causes nutrition demands to skyrocket. Number 10. The Hammer-Headed Bat The Hammer-Headed Bat is one of the weirdest and arguably one of the strangest looking creatures that you've most likely never even heard of. The Hammer-Headed Bat is so bizarre that Snopes actually published an article confirming its existence because so many people thought that the pictures circulating online were all fakes. But nope, it's definitely a real bat. It looks pretty odd. It has an extremely elongated head that looks like the blunt end of a hammer and is outlandishly large. An adult hammer-headed bat ranges in body length from just under 8 inches to over 11 inches, that's almost 30 centimeters, and has a wingspan of between 27 and 38 inches, that's almost a meter across. But just what is this massive creature and why does it even exist in the first place? Well, the hammer-headed bat is what's known as a megabat and it hails from the tropical forests of Africa, specifically Central Africa. It's one of three bat species in the area known for being a reservoir for the deadly Ebola virus. The coolest fact about the hammer-headed bat is that males have enlarged lips that let them make crazy honking sounds like a clown horn. The sound is used by males when they gather together in the hundreds to attract females. They literally fly around squawking and squawking in the hopes of finding a date. Number 9. Endangered Bear What began as a viral video of what people labelled an alien creature has turned into a brave rescue story. It all started when a lethargic and hairless bear was photographed by a group of plantation workers in Borneo. As sickening as it is to say, the workers didn't know what the animal was and so they beat it with sticks until they drove it back into the forest. But the animal was obviously sick and in need. It was a type of bear suffering from an unknown illness and people treated it like a monster. The poor creature was eventually captured near another plantation and according to Nixon Robi with the Sarawak Forestry Corporation, the bear is now safe and in a good place 
and is also getting the help that it needs by a professional vet. The hope right now is that the bear will recover quickly so she can be placed back into the wild. It's not clear exactly what kind of bear it is, though Robi did say it was endangered. This poor creature would probably have perished if left in the hands of the evil plantation workers who beat it with sticks. Number 8. The Bilby The Bilby is one of the best known marsupials in Australia. Nobody else on Earth knows what it is. Wait, do you? Probably not. This tiny marsupial looks like the Easter Bunny, but according to the World Wildlife Foundation, it is an important part of the Australian ecosystem. Bilbies are great diggers and often live inside complex burrows that can be up to six feet, almost two metres deep beneath the ground. They also live in their burrows with other animals, like reptiles, small mammals and even birds. The burrows made by bilbies almost act as communal living spaces for many different Australian critters. Bilbies also have pouches just like kangaroos. Interestingly, the pouches face backward, unlike most other marsupials. The opening is towards the hind leg rather than towards the head. This is to prevent dirt and other materials from entering the pouch during burrowing and hunting. But here's the coolest part about the bilby. Even though it's smaller than a rabbit, it can shift thousands of pounds of soil in a single year while constructing its subterranean home. Unfortunately, the bilby is getting rarer and rarer as each year its population declines in Australia and some are concerned that it could soon go extinct. Before Europeans settled the continent, the bilby lived on over 70% of the Australian mainland as they are highly adaptable creatures. Today, it can only be found in less than 20% of its original range. Number 7. Angora Rabbit The Angora Rabbit is hands down the strangest rabbit on the planet. Many people raise these weird rabbits strictly to harvest their wool, seeing how these hippity-hoppity animals are as fluffy as it gets. The smallest of all the Angora rabbits is the English Angora, which can weigh nearly eight pounds, around about three and a half kilograms, and produce roughly a pound of raw fiber in a year. But then you have the biggest Angora of all, the German Angora rabbit. This thing weighs nearly 12 pounds or five and a half kilos, and is so fluffy that it can produce nearly five pounds or two and a half kilos of wool in a single year. This is not the typical kind of rabbit you see hopping along the side of the road or in grassy meadows. They can get so heavy with fur that hopping is basically impossible. The weird thing about Angora rabbits is that a lot of them are the product of mixed breeding. This means they would not really survive in the wild and are as unnatural as an animal can get. For example, the giant Angora has no way to naturally shed its fur, so it needs to have its wool harvested by a human, much like a sheep. This is not something that would ever occur naturally in the wild. Angora rabbit breeders are currently in the process of officially developing new colours for acceptance at shows. What do you think of these extremely fluffy bunny rabbits? Would you ever want one? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Number 6. The Screaming Hairy Armadillo The Screaming Hairy Armadillo lives up to its name. The armadillo is indeed hairy, and it does indeed scream. When threatened, the armadillo releases a loud, blood-curdling scream that can scare away even the bravest wildlife enthusiast and ward off any potential predators it deems a danger. The screaming armadillo is native to the Monte Desert in South America and has the incredible ability to eat sand. The armadillo eats shocking amounts of sand while searching for food in the harsh, dry climate it lives in. According to the Smithsonian National Zoo, this armadillo often has at least 50% of its stomach occupied by sand. It also doesn't need to drink water frequently. The screaming armadillo has such efficient kidneys that it can go very long periods without drinking, while only getting small amounts of moisture from the plants it eats. And yes, the screaming hairy armadillo does have thick armor plating over its body. The armor plates are actually overlapping scales known as scoots. The armor covers the armadillo's head all the way down to its butt. This is what you might think of as a carapace, kind of like an insect. If you're wondering just how hairy the screaming hairy armadillo is, not actually that hairy. It only has small white and brown hairs sticking out between its armor plating and all along its belly. They are solitary creatures and will spend most of their time alone in their burrows when they're not filling their bellies with food and sand. Number five, the raspberry crazy ant. The crazy ant goes by many names. The raspberry crazy ant, the hairy crazy ant, and even the tawny crazy ant. 
But at the end of the day, a crazy ant is a crazy ant. While you might take most everyday ants for granted, thinking they're all the same, they most certainly are not. The crazy ant is by far the craziest of all the ants. It earned its name because of the frantic and erratic way in which it moves. But what's really weird is that crazy ants are drawn to electrical equipment. There have been estimates that each year over $146 million in electric damage is caused by these crazy ants. Who knew little ants could do so much damage? But it gets even weirder. When a crazy ant is electrocuted, it releases a scent pheromone that encourages other ants in the area to find whatever killed it and take retribution. The issue is that the pheromones cause more ants to be killed by electricity, releasing more pheromones, killing more ants, attracting more ants, and eventually just spiralling out of control. When enough ants pile up, they can cause an electrical shortage. Number 4. Fried Egg Jellyfish There is no other jellyfish in the ocean quite like the fried egg jellyfish. It's also sometimes known as the egg yolk jelly. This type of jellyfish has a smooth, translucent bell with a yellow glob in its centre, distinctly making it look like a cracked egg floating listlessly through the water. It truly does look like a fried egg. Scientifically, it's known as Cotyleriza tuberculata. The jellyfish spend most of its time doing nothing, pulsing its yolky belly to drift perpetually through the ocean. It has a few appendages dangling from its body, allowing it to feed on things like zooplankton and smaller jellyfish. The tentacles are also very colourful, usually a deep purple. The good news is that the fried egg jellyfish is not poisonous to humans, though it could make you a bit itchy with its stingers. I definitely don't recommend trying to hold one or trying to take a bite. You can find these breakfast jellyfish commonly in the Mediterranean Sea and more sparsely throughout the rest of the world's oceans. Like a lot of other populations of jellyfish, the fried egg jellyfish's numbers ebbs and flows. So this can sometimes mean massive swarms of them during the hotter summer months, such as in July 1974, where blooms of this jelly were reportedly stretching for miles along the Israeli coast. And one last note, the fried egg jellyfish sometimes allows small animals to hitch a ride on its head. Scientists have witnessed egg yolk jellies cruising through the water with things like crabs surfing on top of their yellow bell. It's like a deep sea taxi service. Number three, mouse deer. A mouse deer no taller than a pencil was recently born at the Bristol Zoo in the United Kingdom. The creature is known properly as the Malayan mouse deer and it was born as recently as the third national lockdown in the United Kingdom. This completely strange animal has long legs to support its almost disproportionate body. According to the zoo, it will only be about 3 pounds or 1.3 kilos when fully grown. In the past 10 years, this is only the second very rare mouse deer to be born at the zoo as part of the breeding program. Perhaps the most shocking thing about the mouse deer is that it's a distant relative of the ordinary deer. They can be found naturally in Southeast Asia, where they scavenge the forest floor looking for flowers and vegetables to eat. There is also the Vietnamese mouse deer, which was actually thought to be extinct for the past 30 years, until one day was caught on camera in 2019 in Vietnam. All mouse deer are tiny, adorable, and on the brink of extinction. They really are 8 inch tall or 20 centimetre deer. They'd probably make great household pets, like having a miniature house hippo. Number 2. The Striped Pyjama Squid There is a squid living in the ocean wearing striped pyjamas. The striped pyjama squid is one of the only poisonous cephalopods in the entire world. It's also the only one that wears PJs. It's not as dangerous as the blue ringed octopus or the flamboyant cuttlefish, but it does have a venomous nature. There are small glands under the squid's body that can release toxic slime to blind and poison any potential threats. Rather than injecting you with venom, the striped pyjama squid squirts toxic slime into your eyes like some kind of mutant from the X-Men but hold on to your socks. The striped pyjama squid isn't a real squid. It is in fact a type of cuttlefish. It has an internal shell with eight arms and two tentacles for feeding. It's also very small, living primarily in the sand and mud of shallow coastal waters through the Great Barrier Reef. They're nocturnal creatures, usually burying themselves in the sand all day long until the sun goes down and they can hunt. As for why it's wearing white and black striped pyjamas, Scientists believe it's to warn potential predators that it's venomous and not messing around. Number 1. Ice Cream Cone Worm 
There is no monstrosity quite like the ice cream cone worm. It's also known as a trumpet worm, and it gets its name because of the incredible cone-shaped shell that it lives inside of. And yes, at first glance, it does kind of look like an ice cream cone. The cone is made of thousands of small grains of sand, fragments of snail shells, and any other available trinket that the worm can glue together to create its armour. But here's what makes this worm the best arts and craft practitioner in all of the animal kingdom. It makes the shell itself. It has little tentacles that it uses to eat tiny critters or to help build its armour. There is a mucus undercoat on the worm that the bits of sand and shell stick to. It's a painstaking process, but one that must be done. Ice cream cone worms begin covering themselves in mucus from a very early age. Maybe because they're slightly embarrassed about having so many internal organs on display. The worm must also practice regular maintenance to keep its shell strong, thereby keeping the worm safe from predators. Number 10. Monkey Mums Monkey mums are every bit as ferocious as human mums. There's no better example of this than a recent event in Thailand in which a monkey mother died protecting her baby from another angry monkey in Muang Chonbure. This is a classic case of a mother sacrificing herself to save her young. It happened on a hill populated by multitudes of small monkeys. The attack was carried out by an alpha male and possibly the leader of the troop. It's not clear why the rude male monkey attacked the monkey mother, but he did. The poor baby monkey was only about a week old. A fierce battle ensued with the mother and the alpha male. The alpha male won by a landslide and the mother passed away due to her wounds. And even though the baby monkey sustained injuries from the larger male, it survived the battle thanks to its mother's protection. In the end, it was actually a group of tourists who witnessed the fight and scared away the alpha male before calling animal control to help. Workers with the Sanasek Veterinary Centre then took away the baby monkey and treated the animal at a local wildlife station. The young monkey is now expected to make a full recovery and will later be released into the wild, where hopefully the alpha male doesn't seek some kind of revenge. Number 9. Hero House Cat A hero house cat by the name of Arthur recently died protecting a couple of young children from a dangerous snake outside in the garden. This is a remarkable case of a pet feline sacrificing itself to save members of its human family. Arthur the cat was playing in the garden with the kids in their Australian home, when out of nowhere an eastern brown snake began slithering towards them. According to the animal emergency service that got involved, the house cat pounced on the snake and killed the reptile before it could strike at the kids. But unfortunately for Arthur, he was bit during the fight and injected with some of the most toxic venom on the planet. Eastern brown snakes are wildly venomous and can kill a human in mere seconds, meaning the poor cat had absolutely no chance. The eastern brown snake has also been described by Australian Geographic as agile and highly aggressive, explaining why it was so keen on attacking the children. Arthur collapsed immediately after the fight and was quickly brought to the vet. He did not recover from his injuries. Understandably, the family was devastated, but they will remember their hero cat for as long as they live for saving their young kids' lives. But here's the flip side of the story. Did Arthur really attack the snake and sacrifice itself purposely to save the children? Or was it just trying to play with the slithery creature it found in the garden? People may praise the cat as being brave and selfless, but the truth is it may have just been acting on instinct and trying to eat the snake with absolutely no regard for the children. What do you think? Number eight, exploding ants. There is a species of ant known for exploding in self-sacrifice to save their colony. This has been labelled by Science Magazine as the ultimate act of self-sacrifice. They explode to release a toxic fluid stored inside their abdomens, killing intruders trying to invade their colony. During the explosion, the toxic fluid kills the intruders and the ants themselves. These amazing ants can be found in Brunei. Researchers studied a nest that they found outside of their field centre, doing thorough analysis of the ants and their DNA and their behaviour. What they discovered was the first new species of exploding ant since the early 1900s. The species has been nicknamed yellow goo for the toxic fluid that they burst out of their abdomens. But how does this defense mechanism work? When the worker ant realizes it's going to lose a fight, it will contract its abdominal muscles violently so that its insides rupture and the mandibular glands inside of it burst, spraying the toxic sticky secretion in every direction. The secretion is not only sticky like glue, but also corrosive. 
It's basically a chemical irritant which immobilizes every nearby enemy and friend alike. These are the kamikaze fighter pilots of the insect world. Number 7. Maximum Hormones There is a male marsupial that cares so much about having children that it dies trying and the science behind the sacrificial procreation is absolutely horrifying. The small marsupial is the anti-genus and scientists say that males die in huge numbers after mating with as many female partners as possible in sessions that last up to 14 hours straight. This would put a strain on even the most robust human. And yet these tiny marsupials mate with such unbridled intensity that they literally die trying to spread along their genes. This may not seem like self-sacrifice, and one might argue that there are certainly worse ways to go out. But the truth is that these little marsupials end their lives so that their children can be born. The more mating that the little marsupial does, the higher a chance of making babies. This is why they mate with as many females as possible and for as long as possible. This instinctual drive to breed is enhanced by ridiculously high levels of hormones such as testosterone that spin the little marsupials into a frenzy. Even more amazing is that according to the Daily Mail, the anti genus was only discovered a couple of years ago. They have been evading scientists literally forever. But when researcher Dr. Diana Fisher captured several of them and allowed them to breed in captivity, she was shocked when almost the entire population of males died following the end of a mating session that lasted for two weeks. Why do you think the anti genus was only recently discovered? Where was it hiding? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And while you're at it, like this video and subscribe too. Number 6. Sacrificial Spider Mums Spider mums are some of the best mums in the world, and they often sacrifice themselves for some pretty commendable reasons. Scientists have discovered one species of social spider in which females with no children take babysitting to a whole new level. Virgin females will care for their neighbors' baby spiders as if the babies were their own. They will tend to the egg sac and even become lunch for the hungry hatchlings. These spiders live in some of the drier areas of southern Africa and build huge nests inside of trees and shrubs. Unlike typical spiders, this species lacks the kind of glue droplet webbing that most spiders use to build webs in trees. This means that they build their webs close to the ground and that their webs can grow very large. These spiders have been caught basically building houses with neighboring spiders creating kind of a community. According to biologist Anja Junghans from Germany, they cooperate in building webs and in capturing prey that can be up to 10 times the size of just one spider. And here's where the sacrifice comes in. When spiderlings are born, their mother will provide them with as much nutritious fluid as possible. When that fluid runs out, the mother will allow the spiderlings to eat her. And in the case of spiders who don't have spiderlings, they will sometimes step in for the mother, allowing themselves to be eaten so that the spider babies and their mother can live. Number 5. Octopus Mums Octopuses are known as semelparous animals. This means that they reproduce only once in their lifetime and then die almost immediately after. When a female octopus has finished laying her clutch of eggs, she becomes such a fearsome protector of those eggs that she sits over them, not eating, and slowly wasting away to nothing, guarding the eggs until the moment they hatch, at which point she is so tired and starved and wasted that she dies. But what's really bizarre is that females in captivity have been seen trying to hasten their own death after their eggs hatch by smashing themselves off the sides of their tank or eating pieces of their own tentacles. What biologists have figured out is that the female octopus has a type of self-destruct hormone inside of her optic gland that is probably triggered after laying eggs. Scientists haven't figured out quite how this gland works. But they do know that if the optic gland is removed after a female octopus has given birth, she will abandon her eggs and keep feeding and even mate again later on. It's this single hormone that seems to keep the octopus from abandoning her children. Number 4. The Salmon Sacrifice Salmon have a pretty strange life cycle. They have a very strict life plan from the moment they are born. Pacific salmon begin life in freshwater streams, lakes or rivers. They eventually migrate into the ocean. Then, after swimming around for a while, they return home to spawn and ultimately die. It is the definition of the circle of life. Adult salmon almost always return to the very waters where they were first born. And in an absolute miracle of nature, the male and female salmon are so in sync that at the exact moment the male releases fertilization, the female releases her eggs. This equals fertilized eggs. The female salmon then prepares a sort of nest for the eggs to wait in until they're hatched which she then covers with gravel. 
but here's where the salmon sacrifice gets interesting. While the eggs are protected under a layer of gravel waiting to hatch, both parents die. This usually happens just a couple of days after spawning. Their bodies are then washed ashore to decay and typically are eaten by other species. This helps to nourish the environment and to feed the woodland predators. In a way, salmon sacrifice themselves not only to breed, but also for the betterment and sustainability of the natural world they live in. Number 3. Bad Quokkas In 2013, the quokka became known as the happiest animal on earth because of its friendly demeanour and adorable smile. They're like tiny kangaroos mixed with squirrels and koala bears. There's nothing quite as cute. And yet the quokka has also recently earned the title of worst parent in the world. The quokka mother is the exact opposite of the kinds of animals we've been talking about today. Instead of sacrificing themselves to protect their baby, the quokka mother will actually throw her baby to distract a predator and protect itself. This is the complete opposite of self-sacrifice, using a baby like a piece of sausage to distract a hungry dog. However, there is a bit more to it. The quokka will not actually throw her baby at a predator like a football. They don't have the physical strength to do something like that. Instead, the quokka will expel her offspring from her pouch when a predator is nearby. The mother will escape the danger because the noise being made from the squalling infant attracts the predator's attention. And this is factual according to a scientific research paper published in Academia back in 2005. Number 2. Hero Dogs If there's one animal on Earth that is known to end its life for the sake of others, it is of course the dog. No animal is quite as determined to protect its owner as the loyal canine. There is no better example of this than the heroic Jack Russell that was mauled to death while saving her 10-year-old owner from the deadly teeth of a rabid wolf. It all happened during a game of hide-and-seek in Russia. The young boy was hiding from his siblings when the wolf emerged out of the darkness of the forest. The boy didn't see the wolf coming, but Jesse the Jack Russell did. In an almost unbelievable act of bravery, the tiny dog got between her boy owner and the ferocious woodland predator and tried to chase it off. Her defence gave the boy enough time to run for safety and inform his parents of what was going on. By the time his father got outside to deal with the wolf, Jessie the Jack Russell was severely wounded and soaked in blood. She died soon after, but if it hadn't been for her courage, the young boy would have been the one in the wolf's jaws. Number 1. Harambe the Protector The death of Harambe shocked the world. It was also one of the most controversial animal deaths in recent memory. The incident happened when a visitor at Cincinnati Zoo lost their three-year-old boy. The kid crawled into the gorilla enclosure and ended up stuck with Harambe. In videos taken by tourists, Harambe can be seen placing his massive hand on the child and pulling the kid towards him. Experts say that the male western lowland silverback gorilla may have been protecting the child rather than trying to hurt him. But of course, nobody saw it like that at the time. Onlookers shouted and screamed and hung over the bars of the enclosure likely terrifying the 450-pound or over 200-kilogram gorilla who didn't understand what was going on. The zoo security team then launched into action and shot the gorilla to death, allegedly to save the child's life. But what animal experts say is that the child wasn't in any danger and that Harambe was acting in a nurturing manner, protecting the young boy who he may have thought was in danger after tumbling into the enclosure. Harambe was likely trying to drag the child into a safe place. Unfortunately, the ape was far too large to look like a caretaker, and by dragging the kid through the moat in the enclosure, he scared a lot of people. Putting Harambe down may have been the right decision at the time, but what people don't realise is that Harambe had probably only gone to the child in the first place to see if he was okay. And in the end, that act of possible selflessness got Harambe shot. Thanks for watching. How do you feel about Harambe's death? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe for even more great content.